I've been wanting to give this talk for a while, but just never really had like the right opportunities. So, uh, so this is really cool to, to be up here with you guys. Um, we're going to work pretty heavily in code today. Um, if you don't work with code, that's fine. Stick around. But uh, if you end up bored, you have to share the responsibility with me, OK? Uh, so hopefully, we'll get out of uh, some of your comfort zones here, uh, out of what you do on a daily basis. I find that that's, um, that's a really good thing to do from time to time, is just break out of your comfort zone. Uh, all right, so rather than go through slides, especially at the start, uh, let's dig in and get our hands dirty, get a bot going, uh, write, uh, write a script, and uh, see how it all plugs together. Uh, don't worry that you can't read that. I think uh, you should be able to read that OK, yeah? People in the back? All right, so uh, what we're going to do is create a bot using an open source framework called Hubot. Uh, I've already taken the liberty of installing a few things, but if you didn't have uh, NPM and Node on your machine, you'd have to install that, and you'd have to uh, NPM, ins uh, NPM install globally uh, Yo, which is uh, Yeoman. It's a generator. It uh, helps build... Uh, um, starting points for you for something like Hubot. And then there's a generator just for Hubot called Generator Hubot. Again, I've already done this, so I won't bore you with watching uh, <laughs> Node install a bunch of stuff for us. Uh, what I can do is, uh, well, we'll start by creating our directory. We'll call it WP Boss Bot. Go into there, and then we're going to do Yo Hubot to create a Hubot. And we're going to say what adapter uh, we're going to use. In other words, what way we're going to connect to our chat application. And we're going to use Slack. So that's going to pre-install some Slack stuff for us. Uh, this is uh, like a wizard that'll come up. And I'm just going to say my name. Uh, the bot name is, I'll just leave it as the default in the description. And while that installs its, its stuff, we're going to go over to Slack. This is just a, a, a Slack um, organization that I set up just for testing this out. And we're going to go into apps and integrations, bots, Qbot, and we're going to install one. We'll call it by the same name. And uh, that's going to come back with an API token. Uh, since this is just one organization and a demo bot, uh, you can go ahead and steal that API token. I don't care. It's not going to be used after today. All right, so uh, back to our terminal. Uh, NPM installed everything that it needs to. Bring this up a little bit. So we're good to start using this. We can do, um, well, we'll give us the, um, we'll run the command that, uh, that Slack gave us to set that token. And then we'll say bin slash hubot adapter Slack. And so our bot is currently booting up. We're good to go. If we hop over to Slack, we see that our bot is now online. I can talk to our bot. I can say ping, and the bot says pong. <laughs> I can say ship it, and the bot gives me a random image of a squirrel. Or I can say map me Boku, and it's going to give me an image, although Slack didn't bring that up. Um, so we have a, a working robot. It came out of the box with a few commands. Those are just some samples of, of what it can do. Uh, but beyond all that, what we just got out of it is a framework on which to build all of our own stuff. So let me... Uh, let me open that up in Sublime and uh, 
can't really see the sidebar. Um, so there's not really too much going on here. Uh, most of what we get for Qbot is in uh, node modules, which I've deliberately hidden. Um, we have a scripts directory and then the bin directory, and we've been using that bin directory to uh, run the robot, and then the scripts directory is semi-empty. It just has this uh, example script with a bunch of stuff commented out. This is really handy just to keep around because uh, there's a lot of sample code of things that you probably want to do at some point in here. So we can create a new script here. Uh, we'll just call it timer.coffee. And uh, most Qbot scripts are written in CoffeeScript. You don't have to use CoffeeScript. You can use vanilla JavaScript. But again, we're jumping out of our comfort zone, and chances are CoffeeScript is out of most of your comfort zone. So uh, we'll stick with that. Uh, so I just have a sublime snippet to set up this boilerplate description for me. We'll call this a timer demo. Um, we're going to create two commands here. We're going to say Qbot start timer. And we're going to say Qbot stop timer. And if you've ever written a node module before, this is probably going to look a little bit familiar to you where we have module.exports equals and then a function. That function takes one argument, robot, which is uh, the, the variable through which we primarily interact with Qbot. And one of the methods that we're going to call on robot is respond. This is a method to set up a direct response. So if you, talked, if you speak directly to the robot, like I was doing with ping, and it was saying pong, it is responding to my command. So we're going to put our command in there, start timer. And then um, we're going to respond to that command. Uh, so we're going to just say timer started. But we don't want to lie about that. We want to actually start a timer. Uh, so what we can do is just create a variable. We'll start it off with nothing, and then uh, say timer equals date dot now. So now we've genuinely started the timer. And uh, now we have to do that other command, robot dot respond to stop timer. And this is a regular expression if you didn't recognize that. And uh, so we have our timer variable, and we want to uh, subtract, um, so we'll call this variable, I guess, uh, duration. So we'll take the current date minus whatever the current value of the timer is, and then we'll respond with that. So response.send. Duration. That's going to be in milliseconds, so we'll divide that by a thousand seconds elapsed. Uh, okay, so here we have a, a script. Let's go back over to Qbot. We'll just restart it. And then we can go into Chrome, and when Qbot comes back online, here we go, we can say start timer. And it responded, the timer started, and I can say stop timer, and see how long it took me to type that. Uh, so I, I've already delivered on the promise of my talk. If the screen goes out again, then we'll just go home. Uh, we've got started with chat robots. We fired one up, which is really easy to do. Uh, we've connected it to Slack. And we've even gone so far as to write our own custom script to do some uh, silly bit of functionality that we'll probably never need, but we've illustrated some really key concepts in doing so. Yeah, question. Uh, no, I'm just running it locally, just running it on my machine. Um, most People run Hubot on Heroku because it's just uh, one command to uh, push it up there and then it runs and kind of never have to worry about it except the $7 a month to keep it online 24-7. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can just run it locally. You can run it on any machine. You can run it on your, you know, your uh, mail server you keep in your basement. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a step back now that we've 
uh, fired up a, a robot and worked with it. Uh, why would we do any of this? Why do we need a chatbot? Uh, why would we want one? And why would we want to build our own? So why would we want one at all? Uh, I think probably the best reason is that it, chatbots allow you to surface useful and relevant information in a place where you probably already are. How many of you in your, in your day jobs use a chat application with your coworkers? Quite a few. Um, at Ally Interactive, uh, Slack uh, is, our, is like our lifeline. This is how we communicate with our entire staff. We're a distributed company. We're spread all across the country. We all work different times. Uh, Slack is uh, it's our it's our lifeline to each other, <clears throat> and it's um, for us it's it's really helpful. It's an asynchronous communication tool, so I can put a message to somebody at eight o'clock in the morning, and then when they come on at eleven o'clock in the morning, they get it. You don't have to worry about them being around. With chatbots, you can very quickly and easily automate routine tasks. I think that, I mean, if you've never dabbled in doing, uh, building your own chatbots and writing scripts yourself, um, probably after today, you're going to start noticing things that you do on a routine basis in and, and Slack, and you're like, hey, this would be easy to automate, and wow, would it be helpful to do that. Chatbots are relatively obedient for now. Uh, until they become self-aware and then we're doomed. Our, our chatbot at Alley Interactive has a lot of dirt on us, so if we ever become self-aware. Um, this, this is kind of an interesting one that we discovered. So our bot, Alleybot, has uh, been around since May 20th, 2013. And our company is only seven years old, so Alleybot outdates most of our employees. And throughout the past three and a half or so years, he's absorbed a lot of our company culture. He is actually, at this point, an integral part of our company culture. 